Alors, j'ouvre la, la boîte de discussion. Euh, alors, Nicolas Nerka m'a levé la main. Donc, alors, euh, j'aurais une question. I will have a question for uh, Raphaël and Monica. Thank you very, very much for your communication. And one more time, thank you very much for your huge work on ERC, Artivism. And as you said, Monica, I invite everybody to visit your blog. It's full of information regarding our topic, especially. Uh, it was a very interesting, it was a very interesting communication. And uh, uh, it was uh, nicely done to show um, how to, um, to keep the message abstract, help you to escape from censorship. And it's true that it exists in so many countries around the world. I have, um, um, in a way, three questions. The first one, very practical. Can we have an idea of the size of the paintings? Uh, just to have an idea about the size, if they are really monumental, or they are more in a human scale. Uh, the, my other question is, uh, how, um, regarding the finance, who or which organizations finance these kind of things? Uh, the government, the government participate in this kind of beautification of the streets uh, through this kind, this kind of uh, decoration and, and, uh, uh, and paintings that we can see on the murals. And um, the last question is, uh, you have mentioned, Rafaela, um, the notion of Afrofuturism. Um, explain to us if there is, if I'm not mistaken, if there is a kind of connection between these kind of paintings, wall paintings, and Afrofuturism. Thank you. I'm, I hope I'm clear enough. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much, Nicola, for all these questions. Um, first of all, the, the size of the murals um, um, are, um, I wouldn't, I don't know what, what you what you mean exactly, uh, if you mean uh, monumentals in the, the sense of their, um, of their um, um, significance in the, in the overall landscape of monuments in Cameroon. Uh, there, of course, I would say no, they don't have this status. But um, in in the very concrete and practical terms, they are they are taking the whole the whole wall. I don't know. I didn't measure how many meters it is, but uh, let's say it's uh, four meters high and um, uh, maybe um, 30, 40 meters long so it's uh, it's it's a whole street in fact and it was very difficult for the artists to do the work in 10 days to to finish it so they had really to work night and day they went up to midnight they worked uh, under artificial light um to to get it finished that was that was the defeat um secondly who finances these um artworks um they are, in fact, um, I would say in Cameroon, um, you need really the tutelage of an official and often an international institution. And in fact, most of these artists express their their sorrow and their um, uh, their anger, in fact, uh, about the fact that the Ministry of Culture in Cameroon is is totally ignoring visual arts. So. Um, up to the present, they do not have any support from the ministry, which to a certain extent might be good because um, there's less control on what is going on in the art sector. On the other side, I, I learned recently that there is a new law in the pipeline to, to get more control over the in, uh, creative industries and to, um, to get them registered. So through uh, institutional aid, institutionalization or let's say rather through inscription into the into the the the, the, the lists of um, um, yeah gouvernementalité um, they get controlled and um, and in this case uh, through through this strategy less uh, dangerous for the regime because, um, as one artist explained to me, first you have to hand in um, your your concept, 
and after that you have to pay for the concept to um, the for the authorization to paint so as many artists do not have the means to do all this um, yeah uh, officially they can't do this except uh, they are supported by an international organization or institution like Goethe Institute or uh, Institut Francais. Um, so the, the idea behind all this is certainly the decor, so uh, to, to, to embellish a little bit, uh, to make it more beautiful, but at the, same, uh, at the same time to sensibilize through art. So to, to, to use art as a means to, to bring the message over to the, the, to the public. Um, the link to Afrofuturism is certainly um, there in the visual arts in general, that there's a, a vibrant discussion on how should the future, how could the future of Africa look like? And I think it's, it's appearing in, in almost all upcoming art forms like street art, uh, comic art, cartoons, um, what else, um, 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 fashion, um, to, 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 um, to, um, uh, how do you say that, um, uh, for, for empowerment or, um, yeah, to, to get equal rights, to get supported and to show, yes, uh, we can. <laughs> As one of the murals said, yes, we can, uh, citing, I think it was Obama who, who uh, said this uh, slogan. So the Afrofuturism was also the theme of the comic uh, festival in 2019. And um, uh, it was amazing how many productions are dealing since also Black Panther uh, with this topic. Yeah. Merci. You know, has a question. Uh, there's a question in the discussion, and then I see that Fiona wants to raise one. So maybe because there's one um, posted here, uh, Abeka. Abe so, uh, may I ask you to pose your question yourself? Allez, you can pose your question yourself. Can you hear me? You do. Oui. Okay, I was wondering, uh, first of all, thank you for, um, for um, the three intervention we listened to. And I was wondering, because uh, I'm a painter too in, in France, and I was wondering um, what, risk, uh, what risks are incurred by uh, the painters in South America and uh, in Cameroon, uh, because I, I, I think uh, um, it's more risky. Uh, it could be more risky to, um, to make uh, artivism uh, in uh, some other places uh, of the world. I mean, in France, we risk, uh, we have to pay something or maybe we go to jail for, uh, for a few days, but uh, well. Mm -hmm. That's my question. Um, if if I can, uh, do you mean what 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 exactly has the the artist to fear? What what are the consequences of? Yeah. What are the risks? Uh, what, what could occur to them okay. if uh, if they get uh, caught? Yeah. Very. Very concretely, um, it means that, um, first of all, it, it starts like this. I can tell you from my uh, experience with the cartoonist who um, was first uh, taken suddenly uh, uh, in the middle of the night, he, he, there was a, um, a squad coming, uh, taking him to the police station, interrogating him on what uh, he, he's about a cartoon he had made. Uh, so after that, he was uh, sent into prison. That was an intimidation. After one or two days, he was released. Uh, but it was clear that um, that his family, that uh, he, um, if he wouldn't stop uh, his cartoons of uh, ridiculing the president and his politics and also his wife, which is one of in the constitution, it's forbidden 
to uh, it's written that it's forbidden to to make ridicule of the the presidential couple explicitly so if you if you commit this crime you're brought um, uh, uh, um, into court if you have if you're lucky but most of them are not and they're just going directly into prison and uh, stay there for an undefined period of time and if they are lucky um, they have um, a trial but not all of them and some are released um, in in the same curious way as they are imprisoned so it's very arbitrary and it's not predictable what is happening and this is the the biggest risk first of all that uh, you you bring in you into danger your social network your family and your friends and you have a, a strong social pressure by your family and your friends not to speak out because every, everybody is aware of this risk so it's a, it's a double censorship from the one side from the regime and the other side from the society not to risk too much and many have left the country in fact thank you euh, alors, euh, chaque pays a sa politique particulière et je rajouterai même, par exemple, si on prend le cas de l'Argentine, c'est un pays fédéral, donc chaque région a sa politique différente. Euh, dans le cas de l'Argentine, euh, c'est pas condamné, par exemple, si on prend le code civil de, de Buenos Aires, c'est clairement dit, cela ne constitue pas une contravention, mais euh, une infraction. Pardon. Mais euh, bah, dans la réalité, euh, c'est pas la même chose. Euh, ils peuvent avoir donc une contravention et aller en prison, même s'il n'y a, a pas eu de cas, euh, ça reste quelques jours, il n'y a pas eu de cas d'enfermement vraiment d'artistes pendant des années. Euh, et puis après, on a par exemple le Mexique, où là, ça constitue une, une infraction de type euh, BCD, il me semble. Donc euh, dans leur tableau, ça correspond aussi à une amende assez élevée et euh, un emprisonnement. Et à l'inverse, on a le gouvernement qui euh, font venir des collectifs pour euh, embellir certaines prisons. Donc, euh, certaines incohérences euh, comme ça. Euh, donc, il y a toujours une différence entre euh, la réalité et, et euh, ce qui dit dans les lois, mais de manière générale, en fait, ils risquent surtout c'est que leur œuvre euh, soit censurée. D'accord, merci voilà. beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Excusez-moi, euh, vous avez levé la main. Vous avez posé votre question. Ensuite, la question de Sarah. Uh, thank you very much um, for the presentation, uh, for both of them actually. It was really an interesting contrast to see the iconography and the kind of almost socialized um, uh, image language of the muralists in uh, Argentina opposed to those in Cameroon. And in the context of Cameroon, I was really wondering, I found your thesis really interesting about the clouded expression of the artists and it reminds me of the PhD thesis by Angelo Kakande with regard to modernist art or late modernist art in Uganda that also artists used veiled um, iconographies also um, because they wanted to criticize also the social politics and the war situation during the civil war era in Uganda, but also in a more moderate way, not to be too face on uh, to protect themselves. And at the same time, looking mainly at the mural of Kayaman, I was really wondering if um, this kind of representation really just has to do with the purpose to cloud the message or if there's also kind of a stylistic tradition or an academic uh, painting tradition which also manifests in this painting, which clearly is a different tradition than street art traditions, which tend to be more face on, more oppositional. And I was wondering if you can perhaps comment on that or clarify this a bit. <laughs> Thank you, Fiona, for this question. Um, uh, I, must, I, 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 I must admit I had the same um, thought of uh, train, train of thoughts. Um, because I realized that it is an academic uh, tradition. There are three um, Ecole de Beaux-Arts in, uh, in Cameroon, 
uh, one in Yaounde, one in, in, in uh, linked to Yao, uh, University of Yaounde, one to University of Douala, and one to uh, Nkong Samba in the in the western part of the country. And when you look at the artworks produced there, it's true that they are working a lot with the iconography and graphics of uh, masks, so of plastic art. And um, I, I would have to go deeper myself into research uh, into this tradition, I can't tell you. But uh, I know that, for example, um, Jaffe Miyagotar, which is a very um, skilled um, plastic artist in, um, in the northern part of Cameroon, in Fumban, teaching um, graphics and um, plastic art. And he made a um, very interesting comic just by using masks to, um, to, 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 to give a face to his characters. And this works very well because there's, as you know, in, in, in African plastic art like masks, uh, they become lively through performance. And in comic art, it's a sequential art. And there, the masks become very lively, very um, active. And it's, it's in fact, uh, it's, a, it's a detective uh, story or a crime story about um, pollution, um, toxic waste in Africa. And this works very well. So it, it certainly would be um, um, useful to go deeper into research under this link between traditions of um, graphic expressions or um, um, artistic expressions in Cameroon and the, the upcoming visual arts. Yes, I agree. And thank you for the link from Angelo Kakande. I didn't know this. Okay, um, I think there's another question for you, in fact. Uh, Sarah um, Alonso Gomez. Do um, you want me to read your question, Sarah? You, you say that your internet connection is not very stable, so uh, maybe I can read it. A question which joins a bit the question that Nicola just asked in regards to the institutions, mainly international, so which sponsor, sorry, <laughs> Meaning, which sponsor most of exhibitions and especially street art? Do you think, or did you register that the used art and culture field to apply a kind of soft power in order to keep their diplomatic, economic, and cultural influence locally? So that's uh, that's a question for for you, uh, Monica. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I I think it is. Um, uh, it is a very complex question and it, it, the only answer I can give in, in a couple of minutes is it depends. It depends uh, on the cultural institution. It depends on, on, on the artist. Uh, of course, uh, soft power through culture ha ha has a long, his, a long story. So th that's obviously something that, that exists. But um, um, as Rafaela said before, in the Cameroonian case, um, it, it is so uh, arbitrary because it, it's not uh, predictable to see uh, which kind of artistic expression um, is considered as being uh, subversive and, and uh, repressed by the government in which one uh, is incorporated because we have also this uh, double tendency of incorporation uh, li like we have greenwashing now and feminist washing etc and in different cases we, we also have this phenomena of incorporating uh, the critique in order to, to, to calm it down and so that exists obviously in, uh, in, in, in certain contexts but on the other hand um, uh, of course um, uh, certain artists who who need um, not only uh, symbolic recognition but also financial recognition who want to create a startup for example which is a very legitimate and and um, um, and, and common um, uh, question uh, they are happy to have these cultural institutions as a kind of uh, display uh, to, to get known and um, um, when they get suf uh, sufficiently um, recognized then th that can also protect them so we, we are currently working on an article about a, a cartoonist who, who was in prison but who managed to get out of it because uh, thanks to his international network of um, yeah of researchers artists etc so um, it, it's always uh, attention we, we, you can never say yes or no because yeah you need to analyze the whole complexity uh, of each case okay. <clears throat> uh, 
Alors moi, j'avais une question, en fait, <rire> pour, euh, pour Caroline. Euh, je crois qu'il y a une, autre, une question dans la... Dans la... Euh, ok, donc moi, ma question, Caroline, euh, certains euh, des, des nouveaux que tu as montrés, euh, tu l'as indiqué, ont une, une dimension diachronique. Euh, et voilà, il faut le dire entre les générations. Et je me demandais si les, les muralistes eux-mêmes euh, travaillent d'une manière un peu générationnelle. Euh, Est-ce qu'ils travaillent aussi, enfin, je pense que tu as montré de manière collective et ou individuelle, mais euh, c'est cette dimension intergénérationnelle euh, oui, merci pour la question. Euh, donc, euh, ben, je réponds que oui. Euh, on a, moi, je divise plusieurs générations. Il y a la génération, là, vraiment la première génération euh, des années euh, 20-30. Après, il y en a une deuxième, euh, donc, dans le cas d'Argentine, euh, fin du 20 XXe siècle. Et c'est un peu cette génération euh, qui, qui ont eu certains la chance d'être formés par la de la première génération et qui sont encore là aujourd'hui, qui ont aujourd'hui euh, 40-50 ans et qui transmettent euh, à la nouvelle génération euh, de 15-20 ans. Donc euh, oui, là, on est en plein dans cette euh, transmission et on a, je pense, là, une, une quatrième génération qui est en train d'arriver et, euh, et ça se fait comme ça. Euh, oui. Oui. Une question de ma femme, on va peut-être pas non plus euh, tarder à, à habiter, donc euh... In fact, it's a, it's a, it's just a very simple question. What are uh, briefly the aims of protest art? In the post-colonial, repressive, and uh, authoritarian situation. The aims, basically. Did you get the question? No. But, no. The, what, 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 the, what, what are the aims, the objectives, or the targets of protest art? Against you mean against what the protest art is directed, right? Yes, you have uh, you have uh, uh, explicited many of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, maybe you could uh, just uh, uh, recall them briefly, uh, and uh, maybe you have some others that uh, could be sense. But that, that uh, aims, <laughs> I guess, aims, objectives, uh, finalities, mm -hmm. exactly as you were saying. Yeah, many, many. Well, um, of course, freedom of expression is, is one um, topic. Uh, pollution with the comic that Rafaela has mentioned, uh, Jafet Miagutao is a comic, uh, it's a, a comic uh, against the traffic of waste, the internet traffic of waste, of which lots of, uh, lots is ending up in Africa, uh, also in India and other countries. So this uh, waste mafia. Um, then, uh, yeah, so ecological issues in, in general, uh, education, uh, to certain extent also gender issues, precarity, the precarity of, uh, for example, of, of young men who come to Douala hoping uh, to, um, to, to, um, to get a job in this uh, economic capital and who, who end up sleeping on the, their motorbikes. That, that was also a subject within, in the Boa and Bidet Festival in 2018. I don't know, Raphael, if you want to add something, but roughly these are the... I think the, the most uh, important issues, but another um, actually uh, important um, claim is professionalization. And that's why I, uh, I thought uh, that the, this kind of uh, binary opposition uh, in the call doesn't fit to Cameroon because um, um, uh, the fighting for freedom of expression and uh, having a crit very critical attitude towards the system uh, is not uh, contradictory to a wish to professionalize uh, the, the artwork and to, to, to create a startup or to create a job. So the kind of neoliberal um, economy is not seen as a contradiction um, to the other uh, topics. That would be really too simple. Uh, I, I would Yes. Uh, sorry, but um, I would just have a question for um, for Caroline. Um, Caroline, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for your presentation, which was extremely interesting, and I like very much the murals. We have actually one uh, PhD who is working on murals in Los Angeles, and um, 
I could see some, um, and you also brought one mural from Los Angeles. Um, but what I find interesting is that, that you uh, drew attention to the um, change in um, the generation of murals. So there's a there's a time space uh, dimension in the murals, as if I understood rightly. In the 1980s, the the content of the murals changed, and uh, not only the actors but also the content. Uh, but what I'm wondering uh, is um, how how does it come that in in countries like Argentina, and maybe there are others in in South America, uh, artists can uh, take the the liberty to to paint murals uh, with such a critical content because I, I think in comparison to those with uh, the in the Cameroon case they are much more uh, direct in their message and less coded and and how do you see or uh, what what do you think is is the reason why these artists can take the liberty is repression less dangerous or what is the reason. Euh, je vois dans mon français. Euh, en français, alors, en français, c'est bon. Super, merci beaucoup pour la question. Euh, je pas de, de réponse pour le moment. Euh, Peut-être parce que, alors je ne connais pas du tout la situation au Cameroun, peut-être que parce que la tradition est, est très longue. Euh, donc, il y a tout cet héritage de la, du muralisme mexicain qui est né juste après la révolution mexicaine. Donc, déjà, là, il y avait des idées très marquées qui émergeaient. Euh, et puis, je pense aussi que c'est la, la capacité, et on en revient toujours à, art, à artivisme, action sociale, c'est la capacité aussi des, de l'émergence de ces mouvements sociaux parce que moi, j'étudie le muralisme, mais par exemple, dans le cas du féminisme, déjà, il y a eu un mouvement social d'ampleur vraiment euh, énorme. Euh, et ensuite, euh, les, les artistes activistes qui ont pris part, donc, je pense qu'aussi, c'est tout, tout, tout l'héritage du militantisme en Argentine. Il y a eu une dictature militaire, il y a toujours eu euh, ces, ces mouvements de défense des droits de l'homme euh, très organisés euh, dès le retour de la démocratie. Donc, euh, je pense que c'est la tradition de militantisme qui existe en Argentine et en Amérique latine qui font qu'il y a cet engagement très fort chez, chez les jeunes, chez les très jeunes. Même. OK, thank you. Um, yes, uh, that convinces me um, somehow because <laughs> I don't think, I don't know if Fiona is going uh, right with me, um, but I, I would argue that in Cameroon, the 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 civil rights mu movement or the in general um uh, the militant movements are are less uh free to 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 develop or to come up and instead there's much more direct protest action like manifestations in in more in the traditional way of protesting and these are just um uh, turned down with violence uh, regularly so um i think uh, this is why for example the 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 upcoming the visual arts for uh, especially um are one field where protest can be channeled and where it can be where it can find a way to 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 bring out the message whereas the direct action is also taking place but it's it's encountering such a strong violence by the state that people do not, they dare, that's why there's war now in Cameroon. Uh, finally, they have dared, but with a high, high uh, cost. And um, to avoid these costs, others, yeah, rather look for, for other channels to, to get the message through. Je dirais peut-être, donc merci Sarah pour euh, l'élément de réponse supplémentaire. Il euh, y a aussi de la, de la violence euh, en Argentine hein, et de la répression, comme je l'ai montré, même si c'est sûrement euh, moins qu'au Cameroun. Euh, et aussi, je mentionnerai qu'il euh, y a aussi ces changements présidentiels qui, à chaque fois, font euh, évoluer l'intégration du muralisme euh, dans la société. Et là, depuis euh, l'élection d'Alberto Fernandez, on, on est reparti sur un mouvement à gauche euh, qui, justement, euh, valorise ou récupère euh, parfois, mais ces expressions artistiques militantes, donc euh, ça explique aussi peut-être 
de cette avancée, mais pendant la dictature militaire, par exemple, il y a eu interdiction de peindre des fresques euh, et euh, la, la, la formation de peinture murale de l'Université des Beaux-Arts de la Plata a été décrétée euh, comme extinction de euh, cette formation. Non, je, je pense qu'on va, on va s'arrêter sur, sur les échanges qui sont prévus. Je sais qu'il voulait continuer encore sur le coup, mais euh, je pense qu'on a eu une bonne première journée. On va essayer de garder le, le temps. Euh, histoire de garder aussi de l'énergie pour demain, la journée, on euh, commencera avec un panel plus euh, orienté sur les questions des heures de la scène et de la performance. Euh, donc, ça commencera euh, sur le coup de 10 heures. Pour la session de l'après-midi, euh, en fait, nous pensons euh, regrouper. Euh, les intervenants du public et qui ont une dernière action. Donc, euh, on aura dans l'inscription Déborah Bormann, euh, Wael Sahan et Kassaran. Euh, on on terminera certainement plus tôt que ce qui est pour, pour, pour le programme. Euh, voilà, je vous remercie beaucoup, tous et toutes, euh, en présentiel, en essentiel. Euh, ça a été un, vraiment une, une journée très stimulante.